that way. Indeed, so, yeah. indeed. Just because managed. we are in an emergency. Yeah. The world is in an emergency. Yeah, it is. And every time, I think it's a motif running through the Twilight Wait series that things have never been so bad. And we're not going to surprise you by saying things have never been so fucking bad. They've got even worse than the last time we said things have never been so bad. Yeah. That's how bad they are. Uh, we are in, a, in an awful state. I mean, we've got a government who can't govern. I mean, we've got a Home Secretary talking about hate marches yeah. and hate speech and talking racist crap. We, ha we have an opposition that can't oppose because we've got a leader of the opposition, Sir Keir Starmer. Who is in lockstep. Who is absolutely in lockstep and neither is, is neither capable of leading nor of opposing. And they're all bending the knee to American imperialism. So Britain and the United States have given a green light to Netanyahu to do whatever the hell he likes yeah. as far as the uh, Palestinians are concerned. And that is exactly what he's doing. And what he likes is, well, I can't think of any word to call it other than genocide. Well, okay. Do you know what I was thinking about the genocide argument? Right? Yeah. Is that it's not that it necessarily is genocide yet, but that it would be, it would, would you would not be taking the situation seriously if you didn't talk about a genocide, I agree. right? I, agree. I mean, I've looked at a number of videos with uh, international sort of legal experts and so on in genocide, right? Yeah. One guy from the UN was talking on something I was watching yesterday and saying all the preconditions for genocide are there. Yeah. And some acts could, you know, fairly strongly, be strongly argued that they are genocide. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, since the first Nakba, and including the first Nakba, it has been Israel's intention to make life for Palestinians as uncomfortable as possible. They just didn't want them there. They wanted them out. So whether you call that ethnic cleansing or genocide is dancing on angels dancing on the head of a pin. Um, what, what they're doing is unconscionable. It cannot, under any stretch of the imagination, be described coming within the context of self-defense. It's brutal. so that it is. I mean, it seems to me that the, it seems to me that the situation could not be simpler, which is that uh, Israel has flouted or violated international law pretty much ever since it started. Yeah. Um, particularly with regard to. The settlements in the West Bank, which are ongoing. Yes. Uh, uh, and although they are very clearly and unambiguously illegal under international law, uh, Israel is allowed to do it because of its ally America. So everything is vetoed in the Security Council. Yeah. So you have a situation where a, a decade, generation long injustice has been endorsed by the so called law abiding international community. Yeah. That is the basic situation. Yeah. from which all of this, you know, springs. Yeah. That's leaving aside the situation of uh, people in Gaza, which has been, uh, which is terrible, as we know, for the reasons that we know. Yeah. Little kind of literary aside, is that the genre of revenge tragedy was very popular in the Elizabethan period, right? So, well, no, no, this is relevant, this is relevant. Yeah. Yeah. So much so that uh, it's thought by some people that Hamlet, in writing Hamlet, was just uh, rewriting an old play for a vote. For do you mean Shakespeare tragedy. in writing Hamlet, or do you think Hamlet wrote Hamlet? I, <laughs> I mean, are you questioning Did Shakespeare's I authorship? Way? No, I'm talking about Shakespeare's fucking Hamlet, written by William fucking Shakespeare, unless you're one of those, oh, exactly. sorry, people who believe uh, that just Shakespeare If you play it back, you'll find that you said, Hamlet said in Hamlet that... It's, I'm nervous because, for the first time ever, viewers, Twilight Waits is taking place in a very public place. We are. So people are listening they and are. you can feel them on the edge of wanting to contribute. But anyway, to go back to my main point, if I may. You may. So revenge tragedy was very fashionable in its early 17th century, right? And the, the story is always the same, which is that uh, private individuals take revenge because the state is corrupt, right? 
So Hamlet's problem is the same as any revenge hero's problem, mm -hmm. which is the guy who's responsible for the major crime is running the country, country yeah. right? Yep. And so therefore he has no option but to take the law into his own hands uh, because the law is not being applied. Yep. Yep. Now, it occurred to me, to, I don't know what was going on uh, specifically relevant to this in Elizabethan Jacobean times, but that is precisely the situation that the Palestinians find themselves in. They have a situation where they cannot get justice no. Uh, from the so-called international community for the reasons just said. And the, the extraordinary thing is, is no one can argue with that because it's obviously true. Yeah. The settlements on the West Bank are illegal. And they are continuing. And, and they, they are, are continuing. They're being, they're being uh, forced through through violence and through mm. murder, yeah. right? And the settlers are being armed to the teeth now. Yes. Thousands of weapons have been and, distributed and, in the last couple of weeks. And so the mealy mouths crap of Keir Starmer and everyone in the Labour Party at the moment, we must abide by international law, when everybody who knows anything about the Middle East and about Israel, Palestine, know that that's precisely what Israel have not been doing no, no. and are carrying on not doing. So the words are meaningless. Yeah. We're in a Beckett play <laughs> or, or a Pinter play where people say shit and it's shit yeah. because it doesn't have any bearing relationship to reality which is also interestingly uh one of shakespeare's concerns the way that people through language create these absurd fantasies for themselves uh these alternative worlds yeah. uh that um and the cost the human cost of what is going on in israel at the moment is, yeah. is un Believe unconscionable it. and yet uh, none of the people that I know on Facebook seem particularly bothered about it. Uh, you can feel a kind of resistance if you raise it to people in one in my social circle, unless they're like Vern Shaw here, sort of securely on the left. Um, and so people just carry on with their lives. Although, as Gabriel Mate pointed out, genocide or something that could very strongly be argued to be genocide yeah, yeah. is happening on your TV screens yeah. night after night after night. Yeah, yeah. So I was saying to Paddy in the meal that we just came from, when I went on the Palestinian March of Wonderful Last, the most significant, um, um, uh, the one that spoke most to me, Banner, was uh, if you want to know what you were doing at the time of slavery, well, you're doing it now. Yeah. And I'm afraid that's how I feel about it. I do not under genuinely do not understand how people are not enraged, very moved, how this is not the top of everyone's agenda um, because of the palpable injustice, the agony that's being uh, inflicted on yep. civilians daily, hourly. I mean, I watched I watched uh, an extraordinary thing from a, a Middle Eastern. Uh, TV station where the, the, the have you seen this where the reporter just takes off his helmet and takes off his armor because he yeah. says there's no point they're yeah. just wiping us off yeah. you know it's no point and he's full of tears and the yeah. woman back in the studio is full of tears yeah, yeah. Um, and nothing this doesn't seem to mean anything to people no. it's like you know it's like we're the mad ones mm. for for being preoccupied by it yes 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 I mean well, it's one of the least attractive characteristics of the, I don't know, could you call it the, the English psyche, is um, subservience. Um, just, you know, letting the powers that be do what they do. But, I mean, what has been appalling over the last few days, it has been, uh, the veil has been lifted on the total incompetence of government during the Johnson administration. Oh, the COVID we're, thing. we're now told by... We're now I'm told... check the camera, but talk about it. Right. We're now told... Do you want me to carry on? Yeah. yeah. We're now told by Sunak that, of course, things are not like that now. Excuse me, Mr. Sunak. Who was Chancellor of the Exchequer <laughs> during all the things... <laughs> who, when things are not like that now? Who, who, was, like who that? was Dr. Death? <laughs> Dr. Exactly. Death, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, we laugh about it because I mean, you otherwise you cry. It is it is black, black comedy of the the worst sort. We are we are governed by idiots, and they're venal, self-serving idiots from a very narrow it seems a narrow socio-economic base as well. 
which is the other thing that is most st strangest about it, their incapacity to uh, to empathise mm. with the people. I mean, can I just say yeah. I saw that most clearly with Matt Hancock. You know, he went on the testicle kangaroo testicle eating thing. Oh yeah, yeah. And he said beforehand that he would, you know, give a substantial amount of his fees to charity. Yeah. Yeah. So he was given something like three hundred thousand pounds, right? Yeah. And he gave something like ten thousand pounds to charity, yeah. right? Yeah. And when he was questioned about it, he showed no, no sense at all that people might have an, a problem with that. Yeah. yeah. And it would say things like, "Well, that's a substantial amount of money." Yeah. I said. Yeah, and so it's two hundred and ninety thousand pounds, which you kept, for, which you trousered for yourself, yeah, yeah. having made this big thing about yeah. you're going to give to charity. So I think, and it was then it was like a revelation. You thought there is some essential part of your soul missing. There is something in you that just doesn't. That bit, that story about yesterday or the day before, the woman, the, the civil servant, was saying, you know, how do you feel about it? Uh, Matt, and he struck a kind of cricketer at, yes. the, at, the, at the thing, yeah. saying, they bowled me this stuff and I yeah. put it away. It's like they're in a, it's like they're cosplaying yeah. some kind of 50s uh, English film. Yeah. I mean, it's well, it Johnson, was like, you know, get, get a hairdryer. Yeah. It was like that in the, in the uh, which was exposed in the dress rehearsal for the press conference about Partygate and how they were going to respond. And the woman who was said, just said, well, it, it, well, there was no social distance. She couldn't keep a straight face yeah. answering the questions yeah, yeah, yeah. that she knew were going to be thrown at her. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's ghoulish. It, I mean, I, mean, I think the, the, the whole establishment in this country has played it wrong as well with regard to Israel. I know they can't do anything else because, you know, we are, you know, we, 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 yeah, we, we, we are a client state to a degree that you would not want to acknowledge. Yeah. We can't do anything without the, the Americans say so. Um, and, and we won't. And neither will the opposition. And this is Starmer's vow. He will make sure that he is a secure. He is the Tory party in waiting. He is the opposition ready to take over government. That's all That's he true. wants to do. I'm he afraid I think it's true. I ought mean, to point in at this point for keen yeah. viewers, all two of you of yeah. Twilight Wait, yeah. that uh, the whole thing is the argument about Labour has been won in Paddy's favour, right? So that, so that every argument I made pro Starmer, I mean, actually, previous viewers will argument, remember this and yeah, know yeah, yeah. It to be true. Well, no, it is true that I still think, and I think in your heart of hearts, you know this is true, that Labour is better than the Tories. But, but, but the example I've come up with is like we are being offered a choice between genital herpes and AIDS, yeah. right? And, <laughs> And it's like, why does that have to be the fucking choice? Yeah, but yeah. it is a choice, yeah. right? Yeah. But I have just found, I mean, I left the Labour Party probably between the last episode of Twilight Waits and this because of the it, it threatened expulsion of a guy called Neil, somebody, I can't remember his name now. He was the leader of Compass, which is the softest yeah. uh, left group. Yeah. Um, and then the mayor, Jamie Driscoll, who's wonderful, hands-on, pragmatic, work with everyone, mayor, who was yeah. disallowed. And I've had the good fortune to encounter people uh, on Twitter who are now in the upper echelons of the Labour Party. Yeah. And they are all arseholes. I mean, <clears throat> repellent people. Yeah. Um, and you just think, oh, okay, so I'm very glad I've left and I haven't had a day or an hour where I've regretted leaving no. the party that has so lost its way. No. Um, no, I think Starmer is a seriously dangerous person. I mean, uh, if, if the public at large were really aware of the way in which Starmer uh, has dealt with members of his own party, yeah. you think, well, if that guy has power, why won't he deal with all of us in that way? I mean, where stuff is not discussable. Anything is, is called, it's not competent. Anything which is diverging in the slightest bit from the party line is not competent well, I, and not possible to be I discussed. I believe that at the moment, you're not allowed to talk about the ceasefire issue no. in Labour Party meetings. You're no. not even allowed to talk about it. No. But what has, thank God, happened, people have said, fuck that, and they're talking about it. Yeah. And yeah. so Starmer has had to 
not uh, expel members of the Labour front bench who are calling for it because there are so many of them. Yeah. And this is, do you know what? This is the one thing I learned about my experiences in my previous job. Um, I left, I retired early largely because I couldn't stand the person who ran the college. Mm. Only after I left did I discover that everybody couldn't stand the woman who was running the college. <laughs> and that if only we'd all got together. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Unity is strength. Unity is strength. No Absolutely, it. the old story. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I. Okay. But he's got, he, I mean, Starmer has got a seriously authoritarian mindset. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not just that he's ruthlessly ambitious. And if you've read, uh, is it Oliver Ackroyd's? Oliver Eagleton. Eagle, no, uh, Eagleton was the Starmer, Starmer Project. Project. Yeah. Uh, you've read that, you'd see how he, has, how he has shifted his position. Well, he doesn't take a position. He just goes for what's, uh, what's, what's in his best interest, in his career's best interest. Yeah. Um, and he's done that as... Uh, as leader of the Labour Party. I mean, we have got two, our two leaders, the Prime Minister and the leader of the opposition, are totally lacking in credibility. I mean, you know, you take Sunak. I mean, you know, his previous, his previous political experience was being thrashed by Liz Truss. Oh, it's starting to rain. It's starting to rain again. Oh my God, the Tories are at it. I mean, I need to adjust the camera. Hang on, you uh, carry on talking during the rain. No, no. <laughs> uh, I just don't want the camera we to We were blow complaining up. the other day at a vigil and the peace statue about how the rain was raining, and somebody said, actually, it's only raining rain. It's not raining bombs like it is on the poor Palestinians in Gaza. And that was very true. Right. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man should take off his bobble hat to protect his 4K uh, camcorder paddy. Right. Well, I'm... Uh, Are you impressed? I'm delighted, yeah. Yeah, you're not taking as much care of me. Here I am getting no, soaked to the skin. Need it, but yeah. I'm just the talent around here. Uh, look, <laughs> look. the usual circumstances. Ah, no. uh, well, you've got some hair to show. Go on, show it. So we're now getting rain. Anyway, so we're sounding quite energised in our our uh, feelings about what's going on but actually it's pretty bloody grim I mean my feeling is and again <sighs> my feeling is is uh, you know Blake Bear's phrase about the you know the place the, the tectonic plates are moving or whatever, right, whatever yes, yeah. fucking words he is yeah yeah I do think something like that is happening now yeah. and it, I've seen lots of talks given by people who are not mad mm. Talking about, you know, the end of liberal democracy yeah, yeah. Uh, and the rise of the in absolutely insane far right. Yeah. And I do think that's happening. Yeah. I do think that, and it's what my film was about actually, was, was about Englishness as I understood it to be, which wasn't uh, the, the cliched idea, but was some basic norms of human decency. Uh, you know, people should have a good place to live, you know, pe the gap between the rich and the poor shouldn't be too big, we shouldn't, yeah. shouldn't support the national, you know, these kind of things that I took for granted when I was a kid are now seriously coming under attack and other, like Peter Thiel, who runs Pen PayPal, oh, yes. that gave a t big talk recently at one of these fringe uh, events about, you know, how fascism was much more people friendly than <laughs> communism and how democracy is overrated, you know? Oh, dear. And, and it hit yeah. Bob. Well, it is on record for saying that you know democracy is uh, you know, dumb work, and so in a way, Starmer's contempt for the membership, his overruling of uh, uh, well law, yep. uh, but also the, just the voice of ordinary members of his party, yes. he's of a piece with a yeah. culture that is bit by bit saying, yeah, democracy, but really. You know, it's naive because what runs the world is money mm. uh, and so on. Yeah, and, and I mean, you, we, we knew this right from the beginning. I mean, Starmer was the only candidate for leadership of, of the Labour Party who failed to declare his financial backing prior to the votes being cast. He said he didn't have to because it was the procedure, etc. Why did the others declare it and he didn't? Because we knew where the money was coming from. And if the if the membership at large had known where the money was coming from, they probably wouldn't have voted for him. But that's it.
Well, we certainly wouldn't have voted for him if we knew that every single solemn pledge that he gave was a lie. No, indeed. We certainly would not have voted for him. Well, this is why he has no, he has no credibility. He has no, he has no authority. You know. Um, yeah, I mean, it's also worth pointing out that he has no authority. That he's a liar. He's also currently, the Labour Party is currently likely to win the largest landslide. Uh, in its history, yep, or perhaps possible. for any party at the next set. Now, that is 90% down to the fact that the Tory party have been exposed, thank God, yep. of being criminally incompetent yep. and corrupt. But, yeah, but even even in a week when Johnson's incompetence was exposed again, Star Starmer's ratings, his personal ratings, which were rock bottom, have dropped a further 13 points from their rock bottom to the God knows where. Yeah. You know, yeah, but it is an extraordinary thing. And I, okay, I predict now, I may have done it before on this wonderful series, but okay, so Labour are going to win a landslide. So that night is going to be a great night just because it's a trash from the Tory night. But then two years down the line, they will have done fuck all for anyone, right? Mm. So people still won't be able to buy a house, the NHS will still be on its last legs, uh, and so on. You know, uh, the school, schools. Oh my God! There's a is that a rat? A, bat, a big fat rat. Big fat rat. Just like how appropriate when I'm yeah. talking about the Tories. <laughs> no, it's <sort of> Labour. <laughs> Labour. Uh, so the, the, the you know the world will not have significantly changed, right? No, no. Well, that's when the right comes back in, doesn't it? That's when the right, led by Suella Braverman, yeah. comes in. Indeed, she's and that, she's pitched her tent there straight away. Yeah, and it's and saying to to say that. Uh, from the river to the sea is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is uh, genocidal, genocidal uh, anti-Semitic, uh, and uh, Ian Macdonald uh, being uh, denied the whip because of what he said, yeah. which is pathetic. Everybody agrees with what he said. Yeah. Yes, um, and it was rather beautiful. Said, it was too. interesting, actually. I, I heard Lindsay German the other day on a on a Zoom, uh, and she was saying the interesting thing is that the authorities, the whole state paraphernalia got it wrong they thought they would do a ukraine they thought they would put the the you know the star of david everywhere and there would be great uh, celebrations and a rally around behind israel and it hasn't happened and israel is not helping you know their 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 behavior i think that i mean okay i mean just in terms of israel gaza palestine mm. rather it does seem to me that to think about that is is to despair, because yeah. there, I can't see a practical political journey from where we are now to somewhere near where we need to be. Maybe in my lifetime. Yeah. I mean, this slaughter is just going to go on yeah. uh, until either people get exhausted, uh, you know, because the international community that wonderful collection of high-minded people are just going to keep stalling well, the as the bodies pile yeah, up. Yeah, but the international community is becoming isolated at the moment as well. It's becoming isolated between the EU, the UK and the US. Yes. There's not much support anywhere else. Yeah. And I mean, and even within the EU, France voted in favour of the uh, that uh, declaration for a the UN declaration for a, a ceasefire, yeah. breaking ranks, yeah. um, and we've got workers in Belgium who have, who have uh, who will not uh, process, not lift, not touch uh, arms for Israel. You know they're managing to do that. We should be doing that sort of thing here. The vast majority of people, 70 to 80 percent, just just above 80, below 80 percent, are now in favour of an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. And we're not getting it. Same sorts of percentages, certainly in the high 60s and, and, and 70s, are in favour of the nationalisation of rail, the renationalisation of our health service, the nationalisation of water, of power, electricity. But that's to go back to the larger sort of global point yeah. about the collapse of belief in liberal democracy. Yeah. That's the point, is that at what point does a system that calls itself democratic carry on? when there is such a huge gap mm. between what the people actually well, want yeah. and what the leaders are, f are forcing them to do yeah. or standing for. Yeah. How long can that go on before yeah. it breaks? Well, I mean, as you know, Jimmy Carter has said, you know, the Amer America is not a democracy anymore, it's an oligarchy. 
and we're pretty well the same here. You know what? What the Times co corporate, what what corporate Britain thinks is more important than what the man in the street or the woman in the street thinks, without question. And, oh, look, look, there's the rat. Oh yeah. <laughs> And Starmer is not bothered about the fact that there may be disaffiliations from some of the trade unions and he they mightn't get more it. funds. He'll get his funding from his, from his rich donors. I In mean, fact, he wants that. Yeah. I mean, the, the, uh, an interesting point, which wasn't given much publicity, in the recent huge by-election victories for the Labour Party, no question about them, but in the mid-Bedfordshire uh, one, uh, the actual number of votes cast for Labour was less than was cast for Labour at the 19, at the uh, 2019 general election. Now, I know that was a general election, higher turnout, etc., but actually it means that they weren't even able to bring the basic Labour vote out. They didn't need to do much. It, they, they won it anyway, but there are well, they so won many... it because the Tory vote collapsed. Yeah, and there are so many constituency parties that have been disenfranchised, have been hollowed out. They've They've resigned because they won't, they're not, they won't put up with this nonsense of not being able to talk about You, know, you can't even say apartheid. He's, Starmer has become an apartheid denier. He says he doesn't accept the definition of apartheid relating to Israel. He wouldn't allow apartheid to be on the Palestine Solidarity Campaign fringe meetings at the recent Labour Party conference. He's in denial about that. But of course, why well, well, he would be, as he was, as he said when he was going for election as, as Labour leader, he was asked whether he was uh, whether he favoured uh, Zionism, and he said, "I I am as an enthusiastic Zionist supporter." He said, "Without qualification, without qualification, who is anything without qualification?" You know, it's like saying, "My country right or wrong." As somebody once famously said, my country right or wrong makes as little sense as my mother drunk or sober. Because my, my relationship with my mother and with my country will rather depend on what my mother and my country do and what they stand for and what I can support them in. Well, I'm shocked. Mindless. I'm shocked to hear such unpatriotic sentiments. Oh, really. I, I, think, I think we should wrap up. All right. Do you not think? I'm channeling my show again. Yeah. Oh. Do you know, I thought we were gonna I thought we were gonna have one <laughs> one episode uh, in which I slipped a few quotes yeah, in there without yeah, you knowing. But obviously too much to hope for. Um right, so um uh come yeah. Well, when will the next episode be? I don't know, when the public clamors When this war is over, when this bloody war is over. Oh, how happy we will be. No more church parades on Sunday. We don't want me to go on with that. Cause it's very sad. Yeah. Well, I think we've said everything that needs to be said. Indeed, and more. And much, more. much more. <laughs> <laughs> Too much, as usual. <laughs> Good. <laughs>